Fala baixista, beleza? Aqui é Rafael do Vale. Bem-vindos ao episódio 2 da série Na Estrada. Nesse episódio, eu vou mostrar para vocês uma entrevista que eu fiz com o baixista Alfonso Johnson, lá na Alemanha em 2015. Foi maravilhoso entrevistar esse baixista lendário, que já tocou inclusive com o Edwin Port, e ele nos dá umas dicas interessantes de como ele pensa, de como ele trabalha com o contrabaixo. Então, Acredito que vocês vão gostar demais. Então, segura aí e vamos para o vídeo. E aí, baixistas, tudo bem? Aqui é Rafael do Vale. Uh, estou aqui com Afonso Johnson, uh, uma lenda do Contrabaixo. Está é, sendo um prazer imenso é, participar do Basecamp e também entrevistar essas feras do Contrabaixo Uh, que influenciaram muita gente e também me influenciaram. Uh, eu tenho algumas questões importantes para perguntar para ele é, sobre criação de groove, sobre o que o baixista deve ter na hora de, uh, de compor as suas levadas e também dicas para a vida profissional do baixista, ok? Uh, separei seis perguntas especiais e vou começar com a primeira agora. É, qual seria o elemento básico para se criar um, um bom groove? Well, it's a, it's a feeling that comes from inside you and uh, you become uh, a way of letting <clears throat> that feeling flow through you. Yes. And then uh, you, you know, it's like eating food. You know when the food is good and when the food's not good. Yes. Immediately, you know. Yes. So, usually when something comes from love and caring and nurturing, you know that the chef yeah. in the kitchen yeah. loves and what he's doing. So when you go to eat the food, it's, it's yes. ah, you know? Yes, and, um, feeling, feeling. Yeah, so when they play the music and it's coming from love, even if it's just two notes, it's yeah. still yeah. Yes. great. So, como, ele, como ele falou agora sobre feeling, uh, já seria minha próxima pergunta, né? Então, é, fale sobre sentir a música. Oh, very, very important. Um, because when you're listening, you're silent. Yeah. When someone else is talking or making conversation, you're silent. You're listening. You're taking it in. If you're talking when they're talking, yeah, you're not able to really fully hear what they're saying. Yeah. So uh, being a, a musician. Uh, and particularly being a bass player, it's very important to be able to listen um, to what all the other musicians are saying, so you can be effective in, in your role. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Qual conselho é, você daria é, sobre sentir a música para, para os músicos novos? About feeling the music, <coughs> play with a lot of uh, different sources. So for a bass player, um, it's important to practice with the metronome. So you can establish good time. Yeah. And then uh, try to play with other musicians like a percussionist. Yes. You know, who also has good time. Uh, it's also to play with uh, pianists because now the time's not being dictated, but yeah. you have to follow the feeling of the time. Yeah. So when you get to play with different sources of uh, time, you learn to establish confidence in yourself. Yes. And then you also learn to give it flow so you're not playing like a machine. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you want to be able to ebb and flow and that's what makes it so beautiful when human beings are playing music yeah. instead of computers playing music. Yeah. Know, it's very different. And the pop music is yeah. so key. Even with the hot music, even when it has the The music over top of that has an ebb and flow to it. Yes. You know, it's not the, 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 yeah. Unless it's machines. Machine, yeah. But when humans are playing, it's a. Yeah. So it has that flow oh. over top of the. You know. Good. Um, the jazz and the Brazilian music? Yes. Oh, very much so. Yeah, much yeah. So. Hoje temos as mais variadas técnicas. Uh, no contrabaixo, né? é um instrumento que evoluiu muito. Qual seria a técnica essencial 
and he, o estudante deve estudar com dedicação? Um, probably the best technique is just learning how to get the note to sound the way you want it. Yeah. It's true. Um, being able to coordinate the left and right hand. So, um, if you want to play, uh, say, a, a G major scale, yeah. and you want to start here, and then be able to go to a G major scale an octave higher, yeah. you have to be consistent with your sound. And uh, sometimes in the beginning, a lot of bass players, they start, and then they have to shift to another place on the neck. And when they play the first note, it's not quite yeah. solid, it's not yeah. secure. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing I think is, you can play with your fingers, <clears throat> you can play with your thumb, yeah. You can mute the strings and play yeah. with your right. thumb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can play with a pick. pick. Okay. And all of those styles, when you learn to do that, it, it, it means that as a bass player, you have more opportunities to play with different yeah. music. And you work more. Yeah. You know, you can slap, you can play with the fingers, you can play with the pick, you can mute the strings. So you, you have more uh, tools in your toolbox to go yeah. to work. Yeah, very good. Você acha mais importante dominar um estilo musical ou dominar é, mais ou menos vários estilos? Uh, probably both. Yeah. It's, it's the more the more knowledge you have, uh, the more choices. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to play everything you know. Yes. You know. So uh, when you when you know how to play pop music, R&B music, jazz, Partido uh, um, uh, Alto, yeah, or, okay. or you know different styles of music, it means that you have the option of during a song you can put a little thing like a into the music, yeah. And then the other musicians go, ah, fine, you know, <laughs> yeah, that was nice. And then it makes it fun. You're playing now, yeah. you know, because they're listening and you're listening to them. So it's, it's good to have a knowledge of all the styles of music. So you use it like um, just a little bit sometimes, okay. you know. Yeah, yeah. Além de dominar técnicas, feeling, swing, groove, o que o baixista profissional deve ter? Pontualidade, bons equipamentos? Fale me sobre isso. Ah, well, it's very simple. If you get hired for a job, yeah, and uh, the group has to fly from Rio to New York, yes, and you late for the flight, you don't work. Yeah, <laughs> it's really simple. Yes, yeah. So being punctual, uh, being on time, showing up with a good attitude, uh, being prepared. You know, so when you get called, say, for a job, you know, I have to ask uh, what type of music, you know, is your, are the charts, you know, yeah. is there anything I should listen to? So I do all that before I show up for the rehearsal, so I'm prepared, I'm not surprised, you know. Fine. And I'm more comfortable with the music because now I've listened to it, I know it. And, uh, and I usually show up a few minutes early, it's okay, you know, yeah. check the equipment, make sure everything works, you know. Um, that also leaves a very good impression on the people that are hiring you, when they know that you're reliable, yeah. they can depend on you, so they have enough to worry about, you know, the booking and tickets and the equipment and all, but when they know, ah, there's a... Uh, Alfonso, he's going to be on time tomorrow, so I don't have to worry yeah. about you know. Yeah. So it just makes them want to use you again and again, you know, if you show up with a good attitude, you sound great, play the music, you know, fine, fine. very important. Fine. Thank you. Always remember to play more bass. Play more <laughs> bass. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to my boss. E aí, gostaram? Bacana, não é? Bom. Convido você a se inscrever no nosso canal e também compartilhar esse vídeo com outros amigos. Em breve estarei soltando outros episódios da série Na Estrada. Até a próxima!